What's up, and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy New Orleans Lil, and this is gonna be a review on Love and Hip Hop and Jose. Okay, New Orleans Lil and Jose. You welcome, bitch. This is gonna be a review on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, season four, episode sixteen. Bait and switch. Okay, first off, let me say my bad for this late ass review. To be honest, bitch, I wasn't gonna even review this boring ass episode, okay? But I ain't want y'all to keep coming back to the channel and it wasn't there. So I was like, child, let me upload the damn video right quick. So Kirk got Rashida blindfolded or whatever, and he wants to give her this surprise or whatever. So they get in the car, whatever, they driving, and she like, nah, Kirk, you know you the only nigga who I smashed my lashes for, huh? Bitch, that's the only nigga who I want you to smash them thin-ass lashes, Rashida. I'm just saying, or whatever, okay? So, bitch, now they arrive or whatever. So, she take the fucking mask off, and now she got her stole child at one of the best malls in Atlanta. I think it's Linux Mall or something like that, child. I'm not sure if it's in Linux, because I didn't see too much around it. But, fuck, they said the best mall in Atlanta, huh? And they said it was in Buckhead, so I'm just saying. Jasmine blowing up Scrappy phone or whatever, so Scrappy goes to meet her at the barber shop or whatever, and that scene was so fake. She's talking about just trimming down on the sides right here. Girl, you could have been told that man that bitch soon as you got there, bitch, before the cameras even came. Okay? But anyway, child, Scrappy gets there or whatever, and Scrappy like, you know, what's up? What's going on? I see all the missed calls and shit. What's up? So, Jasmine tells him, you know, that Mama D and Ernest about to get married, bitch. And Scrappy is lost because he didn't know nothing about it. Then she tells Scrappy that Mama D want Bambi and Erica to be her bridesmaids. Now, Scrappy feeling like Mama D done lost her motherfucking mind because Mama D know that them two do not get along. So, now we got Jocelyn talking to the CEO of the Gaberhood organization. And they want her to perform for Pride or whatever. So, she go to telling them how she trying to break away from Stevie managing her and she trying to do her own thing or whatever. And, you know, she got her own band and all this other good shit or whatever. So the lady was like, well, we have to make sure that you want to do this for all the right reasons and not just to be getting back at Stevie or trying to do your own thing. So then Jocelyn shares her story about how she used to be having nails in her feet and how she's what some call bisexual, okay? And, you know, she fuck with girls or whatever. And she told this story about how she told her brother, I think, her older brother, that she like girls or whatever. He went and told her mama and her mama was like, uh-uh, don't be bumping cats. Don't be with all that nasty ass shit. She know how she feel at 28 years old, so she could only imagine what the kids are going through because they, cause they started talking about suicide and all that child. That was like a very touching ass scene or whatever, okay? Bitch, like... To all my younger gays who watch New Orleans Lil, you heard me? Y'all just have to know that it does get better. It really does. It gets better. And Jose said it gets better too, bitch. You just gotta wait. But Jose, let me find out, bitch, how you know it gets better? See Missy? Bitch, you better... Girl, he might be on the DL. Bitch, you better watch him. Okay. How the fuck you know? Fuck you. So, Kalina and Tony go to counseling or whatever, and the, she telling the counselor that she thinks she got postpartum depression and how she should be happy right about now because, you know, she got a new son, but she just be so sad, girl. And then Kalina went to talking about how the police is killing all these black people and how, you know, she has black children. And that's, a, that's fucked up for that girl to even have to feel like that, okay? That is some fucked up shit that's going on in this world with these police and these unarmed ass black men, okay? And me being a fucking black man, bitch, I be terrified of the police, bitch. I don't even be wanting to stop, okay? Bitch, take them hoes on a high-speed chase. But no, y'all, don't take the people on the high-speed chase. Make sure y'all stop. Don't talk back to the people or whatever. Because, bitch, they do have the authority to kill your fucking ass and get away with it, bitch, like we've been seeing recently in the news. Okay? So now the counselor asking her, do she put all this shit in her music or whatever? And now Tony feels some type of way because... He don't support her fucking music and she need her music right about now to get through what she going through, okay? 
Bitch, don't feel bad. Not Tony, bitch. You should have been supporting that fucking girl in her fucking dreams, bitch. If that's your wife, bitch. You supposed to believe in her just like she believed in you in that nasty ass club you be at all the time. So Scrappy goes to the beauty shop to meet Bambi, bitch. But you checking the wrong one, okay? He goes to check it, Bambi, man. Why you ain't tell me Mama D getting married and all this and you and Erica supposed to be in a wedding? Bambi like, well, hold up. For one thing, that's why I didn't tell you nothing right there, bitch, because you be on the wrong level, bitch, coming at me all hard and shit. And Bambi was in there trying to style a few looks to let Mama D pick from, you know, the hair and shit or whatever. But girl... Scrappy went in there on the wrong fucking level. Then, of course, out of the blue, Mama D walks in there. So, them two going at it or whatever. He was like, we wasn't invited to the first wedding, so fuck. We ain't gonna be invited to the second one and all this shit and all that shit, child. But basically, Scrappy told her, bitch, if Erica anywhere in the building, I will not be. Okay? So Margot meets Jessica Dime at the studio or whatever, and Dime telling Margot how Mimi done put together this whole little performance, but the gag is she wants to perform Margot's song and bring Margot out on the stage, bitch. Y'all know Mimi not gonna be too fond of that shit, okay? So now we got Kirk, Scrappy, Stevie J, and Tony Child fishing or whatever, and they talking about everything that done happened since the last time they seen each other or whatever, girl. Then it comes out, bitch. Somebody pulls out a picture of Jocelyn in the studio with all these niggas, girl. So Stevie J gets the phone. He like, uh, that's that nigga low. He know one of the people, okay? So he like, man, well, you know I know everybody or whatever. She told me it was somebody I ain't even know. Girl, so now Jocelyn walks in Stevie J's studio half naked trying to seduce the man or whatever. But bitch, Stevie J not having it or whatever. Stevie was like, I thought you told me I didn't know the people you was working with. Bitch, Jocelyn was going to keep fucking lying until Stevie J said he seen a picture or whatever. So then when he said he seen a picture, Jocelyn was like, well, fuck, did you go fishing or did you go fishing for information on me? <laughs> they all got mad because she had the guy caught, child. Girl, no bell, Jocelyn, bitch. You was caught red-handed. So Jocelyn went to telling him that she just want his support or whatever for this little shit with the gayborhood and shit. And she asked him, was he going to come, bitch? And Stevie looked at her like, bitch, I don't think so. So now Mama D goes by Erica to tell Erica that she can't be in the wedding because if she in the wedding, then Scrappy not coming to the wedding, child. Girl, it's just so much drama, girl. That's the same thing I see, okay? And if y'all hear two of them, bitch, that's because it's Jose and Missy. All of a sudden, this whole Missy want to get in the reviews, too. These bitches think they about to come up off of me and not help with no editing or nothing. But bitch, they got the game fucked up. So Carly and Dime go shoe shopping or whatever. And Dime tells Carly her good old plan to bring Margot on the stage, bitch. And Carly don't want no parts in it, okay? Carly says she don't want to have shit to do with that. Because she know Mimi going to be pissed off about this shit. Girl, so now it's the night of the performance, child. And we got Stevie J, Mimi, and Erin. And they all sitting down in their little section or whatever. And Stevie tells Mimi the only reason that he came is to support her, child. So, bitch, Dime walks out there. Dime like, y'all ready? I got a surprise for y'all. Y'all ready for the surprise? Everybody looking around like, well, yeah, what's the surprise, child? So then, bitch, next thing you know, she like, I want to bring out my girl, Margo. Bitch, when I tell you Mimi had that dick look on her face, so Mimi just started uh, smiling like, what is these bitches up to now, child? Yeah. Then, of course, the fucking episode went off, child. So that's basically what happened on this episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, season four, episode 16, bait and switch, okay? They should have switched that bitch out for another episode because bitch, it gave me absolutely Nothing. If this your first time tuning in, I'm your boy New Orleans Lil. Make sure you thumbs up this video if you like it. Look down below so you can leave a comment and push that subscribe button. You heard me? It's free. Hey, diddle, diddle, guy, Lil in the middle, want the hoes to subscribe and comment just a little. Hey, hey, diddle, diddle, guy, Lil in the middle, want the hoes to. I'm not putting you in my song. You know what, bitch? I'm out of here.